Welcome everybody to Flat Earth Nation. It is a Flat Earth Nation. Don't let them tell you anything else unless they're willing to debate you in a fair and honest way. I'm going to have to say this blew my mind and I hope that you understand the seriousness of what I'm saying about the 13 colony hoax. The original 13 colonies. You ever wonder why they always put that qualifier in there? It wasn't just 14, it was 15. It says British East Florida, the 14th colony. Like it's nothing. A new power emerges. And this is from their website here at this castle that we will be looking at. And as you can see, here's the murder river the massacre river here's the town and the castle and this is saint augustine florida castillo de marcos in 1763 the seven years war the first truly world war the french and indian war as it was called in america came to an end Great Britain and her American colonies had won against the combined forces of France and Spain. The armies of Great Britain had conquered Canada and several French-held islands in the Caribbean. They had also stormed and occupied Havana, Cuba, Spain's principal seaport and administrative headquarters for much of Spanish America and Manila. In the Spanish Philippines, which will be tying in more and more over the next week. Transshipment point of the wealth of the Orient. Yes, I say, as Findab speaking here, that was Tartaria. The Treaty of Paris ending the war left Canada to the English, returned several Caribbean islands to the French, and traded Havana and Manila back to Spain in exchange for the province of Florida. Great Britain now controlled all of North America east of the Mississippi River. At that time, St. Augustine was still a garrison community with fewer than 500, 500 houses. Let's get a little quick look at what I want you to see. Here's St. Augustine that 500 Let's see isn't this supposed to go now here we go so you're going to see this is what they're talking about this was built before it was considered a state or a colony one of the 14th and 15 West Florida, East Florida. So this is the garrison, the Star Fort Baby, that they're talking about. Like it's nothing. Oh, there was just a garrison and 500 houses. Buildings, buildings, I should say. Well, there's one. <clears throat> Not a bad view of it either. We're going to be looking at some pictures. I want to say off the top of my head, this is uh, the sub topic of this is uh, to Wise Up channel. The type of bricks here is called cochlea, and it is a rock that is found near St. Augustine, they claim, and Wise Up. It's like Kevlar. You see the bullet holes in it? It's a type of limestone that absorbs all pressure. They could bomb it all day. And it, you could see the scars on the wall there. I'll, I'll show you some close-ups. And they, what they do is they say they, they find it, the rocks while they're still wet, dry them out for a day, shape them into bricks, and they'll last forever. Lighter than most stones. And like Kevlar, it repels Let's see if we can, if I got any other uh, of the city. So you can see it's like, the, you know, a European town. It's a star for it, baby. 
you know that's like an iceberg there's 10 times as much or nine times as much underneath it so you can see this was the trail that the king's road that ran all the way you know the lost causeway it was interesting so that that's the uh you know at that time saint augustine was still a garrison hey it's still the oldest stone masonry building on this continent that they claim and if you want to go see another star fort go look at T fort ticonderoga yeah it's a star fort too when the florida was officially transferred to the english most of the spanish residents chose to depart for cuba some of those who immigrated would return to florida when Florida became Spanish again in 1784. 1784, that's after the uh, 1776, it's after the Constitution. And their descendants still live in St. Augustine today. This exodus temporary depopulated the pen peninsula, but Florida was on the eve of the greatest population explosion since its initial colonization 200 years earlier. That's 15 84 at least so to calm indian unrest on the frontiers the english crown proclamation of 1763 because it was their colony outlawed settlements west of the appalachian this promoted florida as a new area of british colonization colonial pressure for land found a new outlet outlet expansion block to the west moved south so Pay special attention for something that you may or may not know, but I know that 90% or more didn't know this. The British immediately divided Florida into two distinct colonies, the 14th and 15th in America in 1763. So that's 1773 and then three more years until we are won our independence as the 13 original colonies. That's why you always get the qual the qualifier, the original 13 colonies, the ones who stole it fair and square from the Dutch and changed it from New Amsterdam to New York. More to come on that later. So you do see, I'm not kidding you, they had 15 colonies. I want to look at these pictures before I forget. This is a close-up of that limestone wise up that is the Kevlar. They say it's compressed seashells on the floor over millions and millions of years. I think it's all body parts. <clears throat> you know my opinion on it. I'm waiting on yours. The Carolina Road is a road that went through there. Am I going the wrong way? There you go. You didn't think I was going to get through a show without going the wrong way, do you? <clears throat> this is another close-up of what is called the matrix of feldspar granite. And I want you to see how, you know, it's all body parts, but they get locked. You know, how does the, you know, sand and everything else stay cemented to the other rocks when you have, you know, different patterns and layers? Well, that's due to the human body's ability to you know, keep things together in the body. They call it cementation. We'll get to that shortly. There's the Castillo de San Marcos, castle of uh, the king. This is the top part of it. You can see underneath it, this is just one layer. It would go way down into tunnels, but they don't want to blow the mind. The diagram. Fort Marion, St. John's County, St. Augustine. That's just another one of the redoubts, I believe. Now, I don't know if we can see any cannon things. It's not close to the sea, so. Now, on this one, you can see some damage here. And you also just see the pieces. 
I don't know if they're the aftermarket things that you would buy, like maybe these round pieces that are maybe different than these that they claim to be made out of the uh, Kevlar Coquilla limestone. But you can see that, you know, it, it will crumble. I don't know if they tried to tear it down, but this is some amazing stuff. And, uh, this is, I can't read that, St. Augustine and Harbor, but it's a star for it. Looks very interesting. So those are some of the 500 buildings, probably, with the small garrison. Uh, West Florida was a colony of the British Kingdom from Great Britain to 1763 until 1783 when it was ceded to Spain as part of the Peace of Paris. British West Florida comprised parts of the modern United States states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. Effective British control ended in 1781 when Spain captured Pensacola capital of the territory. Right before we won the war, the territory subsequently became a colony of Spain, and Spain was an ally of the rebels of the 13 original colonies. That's why they took this over, so that the English couldn't come in from behind without spending much more money and time. Something like that, right? But was doing the Seven Year War. I think I went over that in that other part. La Florida just traded it back and forth, but it was never the wild frontier that they thought they would do. They were dealing with uh, kingdoms, the indigenous. They had kings and queens, and there was no difference. They still went back and dealt with other royalty as royalty until they got stabbed in the back. And so it does seem like it was a uh, vicious Roman Catholic plot all along with the Rosicrucians in the, I guess what they would be considered in the right places. You know, they had a boy just a, it, their planning paid off. Let's see how they say this. Following an agreement signed at Eren, he has, I know I butchered that, Spain entered the American Revolutionary War on the side of France, but not the 13 colonies. Spanish troop under Bernardo de Jalavez advanced and seized Baton Rouge and Mobile. <clears throat> That's a, quite a... In 1781, Spain captured Pensacola and its garrison. As is part of this 1783 Peace of Paris, Great Britain ceded the territories of West Florida and East Florida back to Spain. So that is how they got around it. They had a... They made it with two colonies, but not with the original 13. So we have something going on there. Let's just get a little look at I just this part here is there is an El Camino Real that is in Florida too. And it runs, you know, and this is the one from California, I believe. I just wanted to show you the map of all of our roads are built upon the roads that we call the Great Indian War Paths. Everything we knew about it was messed up. How many colonies? The original 13. Oh, that was our flag, the 13 stripes, this and that. And all we hear about are the, uh, well, we hear it more and more nowadays. Oh, uh, you know, not that many people were even in favor of the revolution against the crown and that it was just seated and. Oh, but they're happy now that they went ahead and won the war and got that deal because now we're free. 
Now we're free. <clears throat> so we're going to look at the fort here. Castillo de San Marcos is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States, located on the western shore of Massacre Bay. And this Massacre Bay is named after this Pedro Mandendez. So western shore of Matanzas Bay in the city of St. Augustine, Florida, the fort was designed by the Spanish engineer Ignacio Daza. Construction began, they say, in what I believe they, is 672, a mere six years after the calendar reset of what they call 1666 when they went to the Julian calendar and everybody's went, wait a minute, what calendar? What do you mean we all have to go by one calendar? Let me get back to the building. Because that's really all we can trust is what we see here. A star fort, baby. Back when it had water. Hmm. Well, you know what? It would still have water if they wanted it to have water. Original design. 1565. On the site of former Native American village called Saloy. And so they claim they did, you know, nine wooden forts before they built this Kevlar. That is Kevlar stone. It just absorbs it. So here's those domes. I don't know what those other parts were, you know, uh, laying around there. You know, here's the fort. I don't know what these parts are. You can see that this is where the cannons would have spun at one time. But it looks like this thing has been through the mill, right? The, the cannons are gone. I mean, they've moved them back now. But at some point in history, was this, it, it's not just the beginning of it because look at the, Look at the damage to this part. And these parts are, this is a part, this is a part where the cannon would have, you know, the wheels would have spun on this. There'd be a platform or something and then the wheel, the weight of it, it, it could adjust. That's what these are. But these are all parts that I, you know, that look like the top of chimneys, mantles and things like that. So I think we're on to that. <clears throat> well, that's pretty good. Has that one crack, but no, those guys still do that every day there. Fort Marion, we saw the plans for that earlier. It was named to honor General Francis Marion. He wrote, na named the Swamp Fox. Structurally, the Americans made few changes to the fort during this time. Because why bother? It was good. Many storerooms could, were converted to prison cells on account of their heavy doors and barred windows. Well, we, we've, been, we've been living in uh, houses and forts we haven't built for a long time here. Hot shot furnace used to heat cannonballs to shoot at wooden enemy ships. We had no idea what was going on during the fairy tale time of the golden age of Christ. Giants roaming the land. Powerful, powerful enemies besieging each other, probably only using chess moves and but sometimes when it came down to the Roman Catholics using butchery, I will get to the Mentanza River in the Mentanza Fort. <clears throat> the butchery of Medendez and how he basically stopped the Jesuit. The Jesuits stopped the Huguenots from coming in when the uh, states were being founded there. 
All right, so a little look at some of this rock. This is how they find coquina, coquina outcropping on the beach in Washington Oaks. That's in Florida. So see, that's what it is. They, it's a sandstone type of a thing. They, it's a sedimentary, sedimentary rock is what they call it. But it is moderately cemented. Hmm. They accumulate in high energy marine and lacustrine environments. Well, no, that salt water just kept it more pliable and moist for all of that time. They say it's mainly composed of mineral calcite because it they have to account for it being all organic. You saw the picture of it. Did it look like seashells or coral to you? Mm -mm. It looked like something that if you looked at a giant at their skin and you had to use a 3,000 times microscope, that's what you'd be looking at. Go get a microscope and look at your skin 3,000 times up and you're going to be going to say, what? Right there, that's the picture we saw. They've been using it for construction. Hmm. But you can't go quarrying it no more. Now listen why. When first quarried, coquina is extremely soft. This softness makes it very easy to remove from the quarry and cut into shape. However, the stone is also, at first, much too soft to be used for building. In order to be used as a building material, the stone is left out to dry approximately one to three hour years huh which causes the stone to harden into a usable but still comparatively soft foam form so you saw all of those you know the stones there's not like a you know four corners don't meet that often it is just built hexagon style but they have to wait one to three years for all the water to drain out for its Kevlar to start, you know, picking up. Man, oh man, what will we believe next? So here it is, the Fort Massacre National Monument. It's just a type of limestone, all right? So here's a picture of that, that matrix and what they call the matrix of rock it's the finer grain mass of material wherein larger grains crystals or clasts are embedded the matrix of an indigenous rock consists of finer grain often microscopic crystals in which larger crystals are embedded and locked in there but how through cementation now I know how the body does it. And this is how they explain it away in nature. All sediments are at first in an incoherent condition and they remain in this state for an indefinite period. Millions of years have elapsed since some of the early tertiary strata gathered on the ocean floor, yet they are quite friable, which means easily crumbled with the strength of your hand and differ little from many recent accumulations. There are few exceptions, however, to the rule that with increasing age, sedimentary rocks become more and more indurated. And the older they are, the more likely it is that they will have the firm consistency generally implied in the term rock. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, the reposited cementing material is most commonly calcareous or siliceous, which means it's organic. Limestones, which were originally a loose accumulation of shells, corals, become compacted into a firm rock in this manner. Well, if you're going to go with the Roger Spur and Mud Fossil University, Mr. Flat Earth Hater and Denier, that's what he says happens after the human uh, giant body parts leach out. Somehow the minerals of the earth come back in and fill it back up perfectly. 
because it stays hollow and waits for those other parts to come back in. And that's how the matrix is formed. It seems redundant. At least that's what I think. Get a couple, just a couple more looks at some of these pictures. There it is, you know, all over the world. And the matrix is the same. The stones are crying out to you. The stones have cried out to me. We don't have to believe what they told us was going on 300 years ago. They don't even tell us the truth about where President Obama was on September 11th when the Benghazi embassy was attacked. They'll hide all the history they feel necessary to keep you like a mushroom in the dark and best fed on BS. Well, I think that ought to do it for now. Amen. Hallelujah. Aho. It's a flat earth nation. Don't let them tell you anything else because how do you know they have your best interest at heart? You know I do, or at least I'm trying to prove it every day.